So, because I'm gonna be chopping this in half and actually cooking it with the skin on, I've taken the stickers off. Um, and, you know, I found this on the floor in, in a shop. I mean, it's where lots of other veg was, but personally for me, I'd feel a lot calmer if I just gently wash the outsides. You may think I'm insane, but I like to keep it all clean. So now um, I'm gonna basically get a spoon ready and I'm just gonna chop this all the way down the middle. Mmm, look at that color. I think that's my favorite color, that and cobalt blue, which weirdly I'm wearing. Ah. Um, and we're gonna do the same for this one. Beautiful. I got sticky hands. I gotta turn you off. Hi. I did the hair up because it was getting in the way. Okay, so now we're gonna get a spoon and we're just gonna scoop that out. Um, unless you have a garden or you have chickens, I'd say get rid of those seeds. Um, if you have chickens or you have animals that would like to eat them or maybe you wanna plant them, keep them. They're exactly the same seeds that you'd buy in a, a garden shop. Um, but yeah, this is fun and sticky, so I'll see you in a bit. I'm sorry, I keep on losing videos because um, my screen goes blank. So we're going to chop these, I'd say about an inch thick. Um, and to make it easier so that it's not rocking around, you're going to turn it over on the flat side. Ugh. And then you can really put your weight into it. Um, these are quite hard vegetables. Maybe I'm cooking them a bit too early, but they smell really good. So that's that one. How's everyone doing, by the way? Is everyone feeling a little bit more normal? We've been able to get used to it all for a week. I feel like I found it really helpful keeping my structure of Monday to Friday. Like the moment it, my weekends and, and weekdays start blending, I, I feel like I get a bit. Yeah, I was saying that my my uh, normal weekday, weekend schedule feels better when I keep to it. Um, I got a bit panicky when uh, my weekdays were blending into weekends. So that certainly helped. Um, so what I'm gonna do with these is I'm gonna put them in that uh, long pan just there. And then I'm also going to chop up the garlic now and basically douse it all in yummy olive oil. Okay. So I ended up using two pans in the end because I am using a lot of butternut squash. But basically, um, this is what my pans look like now. Very pretty colors. Uh, I haven't put the olive oil on yet. Don't worry, that's coming. And then just smush them about a bit so that they're all covered underneath and on top with olive oil. I don't know about you, but I love garlic. Love it. Like, I don't mind garlic breath. You could have eaten a whole garlic clove. It doesn't do anything to me. I love it. It's actually more like perfume. So I'm gonna use quite a lot of garlic, uh, but for this portion, uh, these aren't gonna be diced up. They're not gonna be chopped up fine at all. They are going to be halved. Um, Half? Does that make sense? I'm just gonna basically chop them in half once with the uh, skin still on. Um, I always remember watching uh, Jamie Oliver's shows and all of his garlic would just look so tasty and he wouldn't even chop it properly. He would like just chop that in half and put it amongst the vegetables and it would look like the most amazing thing ever. So maybe this is a steal from him. Thanks, Jamie Oliver. So I just peppered and I salted my uh, butternut squash. Those are all the hard little garlicky thingies hidden in amongst there. And they're gonna go in now and I'd say watch them, certainly watch them. I'm gonna guess like 20 minutes? Until they're soft, basically. I'm so bad at that part, sorry. Just watch it. The really, really crucial part is you have to make sure that you are um, well parched, so, you know, make sure that 
you're ready to uh, to pour away. And then, um, you know, you can carry on after that, but that's really important. Nutritious. Okay, so the next part, whilst that's cooking in the oven, is I'm going to make an additional part of the meal, which I intend to sprinkle in each bowl of the soup. This soup is totally fine without this part, so you don't have to make this at all. I'm gonna be making potatoes and chorizo. Um, it's a dish that my dad makes hundreds of times. I, I grew up with it. Um, and it's just really tasty, but I'm gonna put this in the soup, which I've never done before, but I imagine it's really good. So we're just going to slice each potato uh, into squares. And once they're in squares, we put them in the pan with chorizo and it just fries nicely. And all the juices, as I said last time, come out of the sausages and they create a great flavor. Yeah. So this is what my potatoes look like. As I said, they're little squares and um, I've kept the skin on because I don't mind the skin on on this dish. It's actually quite tasty. Um, you can take it off if you want to. Next, I'm gonna be chopping my sausage. It's my favorite bit because I get fed. Yay! So, this is what I was talking about the other day. All of those little bits of fat and flavors are all going to melt in the pan. And that's the thing, that's the flavor that I like. As I said, you do not have to put this in if you do not want to. The small potatoes are gonna cook just fine. In fact, you could put in, I'm sure you could put in a really good vegan, um, vegan sausage or even some chunks of garlic or as you know, the other day when I put feta on uh, my little ratatouille aubergine dish, you could put feta on those potatoes as well. It'll taste great. Today, I am gonna use this sausage, um, cause it's tasty. Into little, this is what my, hang on. I've got a dog trying to have his dinner. <laughs> this is what my butternut squash has looked like so far. How many minutes has that been, guys? I probably should have been on top of it. They still look like they have some time to go. And that's the sausage. I put a little bit of dried rosemary on it just because I thought that could get it tasting extra sexy. Okay, so my potatoes and chorizo is cooking along nicely. This is what it looks like. I just put a little bit of oil on there so that it could get the whole thing going. Next, I chopped up some onions, which I intend to put in there too. And those are the garlics for in a minute. Guys, those potatoes look. I'm in a relationship with my food. Oh no. important to also note that it's not scary to hear uh, quite an aggressive crackling when making these potatoes so when I stir it around it's gonna really make some noise and I I like that because they're ever so slowly getting nice and browned oh fogging up the camera so I've just taken my butternut squash out of the oven just to have a little check I was probably wrong with the timing that I told you all, but I'd say until it gets to, sorry, that lovely brown that you see there, and what you want to be able to do, I know this is a sharp knife, but it needs to be able to softly go in, just like that, ever so softly go into the center. If it's still crunchy, pop them back in the oven. Um, but right now, that is, I think, perfect. I'm gonna leave them um, for just, maybe two more minutes in the oven um, whilst I turn the oven off so that they can get a little bit extra. Um, yeah, that's what's happening right now. So the thing that you can be doing whilst you're waiting for your uh, potatoes to finish, they're still going nicely. I'm actually just gonna turn it down a little bit so they don't start burning. Uh, the butternut squash, I'd say have two more minutes. I like my butternut squash soup quite spicy. Not like blow your head off spicy, but um, I do like a little bit of heat there. 
um, and especially with you know wanting to feel cozy and with the world feeling weird a hot soup is always better when it gives you a little bit of snivels I feel like that anyway anyway uh, if not you don't need to put it in you're totally fine so grab your knife I'm gonna take the seeds out so it's not painfully spicy what's what cheese do I have here I have serrano mm, fresh peppers ah! any chili just put any chili in I mean you could have even roasted some red chilies in. That would have been tasty. I'll do that next time. So just really finely. Chop up those chilies. Nut squash out they look really beautiful so I'm gonna leave them to cool for a bit because I'm gonna have to touch them with my hands so they have to cool quite a lot and these are my lovely potatoes and sausage and they are getting so nice and golden um, I don't mind the fact that they're all a little bit different uh, it's you don't have to worry about them all being completely the same so now I'm on to my garlics. I've chopped all my chili and I've left them on the corner of the board. Um, I've peeled my garlics and I intend to put a little bit on my potatoes and um, a, a little bit of the fresh uh, garlic in my butternut squash soup. All of those garlics that I chopped up before and I put in the pan, I'm gonna take them now out of the shells when I'm ready, when that's cooled down, and they're gonna go in with the soup as well. So don't worry, we're not gonna waste anything. Uh, lots of my recipes are all to do with, well, they're not my recipes. I've copied them off someone or I've pretended they're mine and them actually my parents. But yeah, lots of the things that I will always be cooking, I'm always trying use as much of the stuff that I have in my fridge as possible or I'm trying to reuse an old vegetable or make sure that it gets the longest life possible in the fridge I think it's really it cut me off I was gonna say I think it's really important to use um, all the things that were originally gonna be wasted uh, also makes it extra tasty I've just turned the heat off. Um, that's gonna sit in the pan now until we serve up soup. It looks and smells. Looking delicious. All right, so uh, the butternut squash is finally cool enough to cool down. I mean, to work with. Ah, my brain. It's finally cool enough to work with, yay. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the skins off now and I'm gonna put all of the inside, the fleshy part of the butternut squash in here. I'm potentially gonna burn my fingertips because I think I'm gonna do this a little bit too soon, but you guys are waiting. And I know that you also want to see the end product. So I'm gonna burn myself for you. <laughs> Maybe not that bad. All right, I'll see you in a second. I moved it this way so that you can see everything a bit properly bit properly a bit better sorry I don't know why my brain is dead all right so we are gonna get a knife because this is useless where's my little knife okay okay so we're just gonna hold it and we're gonna go close to the edge please don't waste Get all of that goodness. See, it's breaking away in my hands. That is great. And that is how thin I want to see your skins, everyone. No waste. And then you just plonk that in there. It's quite therapeutic, actually. And again, ooh, she's crumbly. Oh, come on. Uh-oh. Oh, this could take a while. Should I just see you in a bit? See you when it's done. Oh, sorry guys, that took longer than I thought it would. Um. I got to the end, this is my scraps. I'm gonna show you all of my bits of butternut squash in there. All these bits of garlic that I, I halved are so, here, I'm gonna show you, excuse my hands. They're so juicy and wet now and you're just gonna put them straight in the pan, but take them out of, the, out of their skin first, obviously. 
Um, but those are the best bits. They're almost like savory sweeties. They're so soft. You put them straight in the pan. So something that I'm gonna do um, also to, to help the kind of blending process, either you can put these in a blender or you can use the hand blenders. I'm gonna use the hand blender today. There we go. So these are my pieces of butternut squash. And um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna fill up a jug with some vegetable stock. And that's just gonna help keep that really nice and loose when I'm blending it. So it's not too tough for the blender to get through. Uh, the vegetable stock will obviously also add really lovely flavor and it's, um, it's not too, it's not gonna take over our flavors that we've made here. Okay. All right, so I've melted my vegetable stock in here and I've just, oh, there's a floater. <laughs> Any other pieces, just squash it with the back of a wooden spoon so that it's all melted. I'm also then gonna put my chilies and my garlic in. I've just put the, uh, the, the stove on ever so slightly, just because those butternut squashes have been out for a while um, and I didn't want the soup to be cold. So I have put in the stock, some of the garlic and the chilies. Now I've left this amount of garlic for the potatoes when I heat them back up. I'm now going to plug this bad boy in and I'm going to blend the shit out of it. That's such a satisfying sound. Um, if you have a big blender, you can put all of the butternut squash in there. That's something that we haven't quite added to the kitchen yet. Also, this is a bit easier. Maybe I should have done it in the big blender. I haven't. I just put it in here. And because of the liquid that I put in, it's making it really helpful to blend down. So I want it completely smooth. Um, if you want bits in it, then obviously don't blend it to complete smooth, but I like it smooth. So that's what I'm going to do. It's good for the arms. Okay, I just tasted it. It tastes good. It tastes a little bit on the sweet end because we are working with a sweet uh, vegetable. So I am going to grab my salt and I'm gonna salt it. Quite handsome grabs of salt. <laughs> He's starting to blob a bit. Then we're gonna get some pepper. Um, yes, I do have a golden pepper grinder. My dad gave it to me as a birthday present because he knows that I love this one so well, much. I'm just gonna stir that up, stir, stir, stir. constantly taste your food it's really good to I might put some of the Italian herb blend that I put in last time it makes everything taste good oregano doesn't it that tastes really good okay I'm putting my potatoes back on the heat to heat them back up they've been sat there getting cold for a while because I'm nearly ready to serve up um, I'm gonna put my garlic my fresh like I'd say clove and a half um, in my potatoes so that they get an extra. Guys, we're at the final stages. So, get your bowl. Plop this in there. Mm. And this is your homemade butternut squash with potatoes and chorizo. And then you're just gonna pop those potatoes on the top potatoes and chorizo sorry sprinkle them on and this is what your bowl will look like in there we have butternut squash garlic onions with the potatoes chorizo with the potatoes a bit of rosemary on the potatoes when they were cooking 
it's completely good for you completely tasty you can as i said last time you can put that uh, soup in containers and pop it in the freezer take it out let it thaw microwave it'll last um that was incredibly easy and actually i didn't use very many ingredients at all and it tastes really good um so get that in you keep on smiling keep on cooking i find it really meditating to cook you may find it too so go get some vegetables and make this concoction <laughs>